Welcome back to another Craster crawfishing adventure. Earlier this year, on a Craster episode, we talked with John Studi, who is an aspiring commercial crawfisherman out of, out of Lake Tahoe. Now, Mike from Craster's bucket list item has always been to go crawfish Lake Tahoe. Come along with Mike, where he and John go crawfishing on Lake Tahoe. Then, have a culinary experience in two Lake Tahoe restaurants with their crawfish they catch. Stay tuned through the whole episode. We have some very exciting crawfishing news. Now, come along with us on this great crawfishing adventure. I'm coming out of the landing and coming up. Ah, oh, there's John. John, good, Mike. Good morning, Mike. Pleasure to meet you in Ple person. Finally, after a year on the phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe your workspace is like one of the most beautiful places yeah, on Earth. Lake Tahoe. Just, what a place to go crawfish. This is the new office. Ah, oh, that's great. <laughs> Tell me about it. Where on the lake well, are we going to be? We're on the South Lake Tahoe side. That's Mount Talac over there on the west side. And we'll be fishing. Uh, we'll be launching the boat at Cave Rock and then going north on the east side to Dead Man Point and Secret Harbor, and that's where we have some traps to go pick up. Oh, right on. I can't wait to go pull some traps. I know we have some culinary experiences we're going to have today. Yes. This is going to be great. Come on, you guys. We're going to go out on Lake Tahoe. It's a pristine, beautiful lake. Every boat that goes on the lake gets inspected. Make sure all the water quality and everything stays right. I don't blame them at all. Captain John. Hey John, where are we going? Right Heck yeah, man. So we're setting up and coming in and you can see a white buoy right there. He is, John actually has a series of buoys that go right down the shore out here. Okay, now what we do is, uh, okay, and then what we do, put it over here, and here, and we go around, and around, and here, and then we're ready to go. All right. And how far down are these traps? 75 feet. 75 feet. That's, a, average, long, yeah. that's a long ways down. Yeah, if you had to hold your breath. <laughs> oh yeah. People always ask me, what's the best depth? I guess it depends on the lake you're on. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be looking at temperatures down at depth, but I think it's temperature related. Yeah, I agree. Full of crawfish. Yeah. See why I doubled the traps. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a nice catch. There's some good size ones too. Woohoo! That's a good catch. So yeah. You know that was the that was the first trap pull. Yes. Amazing. Gotta John just said something really important. What do you say, John? What do we got to do with the crawfish? We got to keep them cool, clean, and moist. Yes, we do. Okay. One thing I notice is is the water clarity here is insanely clear. It is. It is. It's the best that's been in um, since the 1980s. This had uh, salmon with mixed with peak stuff. The CCA? CCA. Yeah. And I froze it. And then they can get their little claws in that. Nice. And with your trap, it's setting sideways once those traps are on the bottom. So that looks like it came out of the dishwasher. It does. <laughs> it's certain, you know what? They get their claws in there and they just clean it out. And <laughs> it's kind of funny because it, when you get that in the water, it starts attracting more. Yeah. Here's what, how we empty them. He 
You know what's cool, John, is is I think that um, that would make a meal for you, me, and another person. Just just that first pull. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Woo, do a little flyover. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Oh, look at all those good crawdads. All right, first pull. We're we're moving on. Climbing up on another buoy. You can see there's buoy here and there's a buoy out there and John's got his operation down. That line goes straight down to forever. Pulling those by hand from 75 feet would be, that would be a chore. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pulling crawdads out of the water, do you, are you anticipating that it helps water quality in the um, lake? If, if Operation's got big enough. It, this boat could f pull forty thousand pounds um, a season, and that's a half a percent of what's out there. But it might it might it may help the water quality though. Oh it, yeah, and in the clarity. near in the near shore because that's where it's affected. Is their their effect is concentrated. Gotcha. Not out in the middle. Oh, that's that's yeah, neat, yeah. man. So you're so it, you're helping out the lake. Yes. You're looking at uh, it eventually, you know, getting them into the restaurants and towns and yeah, yeah. It's it's a whole thing that's in development for sure. Nice. But uh, I I anticipate Tahoe will become a, a destination for crawdads, just like New Orleans. Oh, that would be so cool. Yeah. And you and I, I hope you bring it, man. It, it's gonna happen. One thing that I wanted to show is the, the vibrant colors on these crawfish. Look at that one, look how blue that one is. Oh yeah, look at the colors on these. There's got the really deep blue, you've got the, the red, you got the mountains in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Woo! Few <laughs> traps in, we got, we got plenty to, to go eat in the restaurants tonight. Okay, so that's uh, four traps. So what's going on is John has, he's pulled a whole, a whole cooler full of crawfish and we're starting on more. Hey John, I have one question for you. you yeah. Now uh, I see you have a lot of the Craster gear. Um, why, why did you, why did you choose the Craster gear? Did you, did you try other gear also? I tried at least four kinds of traps and uh, these catch more and they're easier to unload and to put bait in, all these bending, the, the hooks with pushing instead of pinching. Pinching's really hard. Gotcha. You know, and but pushing with your thumb or your hand is easy. So they're easy to open, easy to empty, catch more than the others. So these are the best traps I could use. Wait to wait, I hear people, fishermen saying that all the time and kind of hanging up their other traps. Well, what kind of percentage more might you get in weight in a craster trap? I'm saying double. Double? Double the weight. Excellent, and for a guy like you that's, you know, looking potentially to, to really catch a bunch, that's really important. Oh yeah. Excellent. Well, all right, man, sounds good. Let's head on down to the, head on back to the marina. All right, sounds great. Man, John, that was, that was amazing taking me out on the lake. Now, what's up next on the agenda? Well, you know, I think most people would want to eat some. Wouldn't you want to eat some? Oh, I want to eat some. How about, how about getting some uh, from some New three New Orleans guys who, who specialize in crawdads? I'm in. We're going there for lunch. And then dinner, we got another place that is, is unique. And they got po'boys, they got ceviche, and they're doing a boil just for us. Nice. What are the name of these restaurants? Uh, so, so Toulouse is the Cajun restaurant and Shed Cat Distillery and Kitchen is uh, got a Cajun flavor to their menu for sure. 
Yeah, they, they're very much into the local products and, and having local products on the table. Uh, great morning. Yeah. I'm excited to go do so like, have a culinary experience. Let's do it, man. All right. Now that the guys have caught some great looking crawfish, let's go with them to the Toulouse restaurant at Lake Tahoe for a classic Louisiana crawfish boil. It's kind of nice being able to sneak back in the kitchen. We are at Toulouse and they've got some boiling water going, getting ready to put in some of these local crawfish. Yeah. A little bit, if you can kind of let them get a quick, yeah, get a Good local crawfish. Doesn't get better than that. That's not. Good flavor right into them, huh? Exactly, yeah. Excellent. Oh, lemon juice, all that seasoning. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I have to tell you, we don't have smell o vision but I can tell you that smells fantastic. Yeah, tasty. Right on, man. Good. Thanks, Alex. Awesome, thanks, guys. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that uh, looks and smells. Smell that. Woo! Oh, that oh. smells great. Ooh, Ooh that potato's good. Wow. You know, it helps. That's got a lot of flavor. Squeeze your thumb and it puts you delicious, guys. Yeah. Love your seasoning. Yeah, really flavorful. Is this a new experience for you? You need a job. I know. I'm not. I'm not. You got to um, dig in there. I'm just. <laughs> that's the tail meat. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, that's good. It's a boil and then a dry boil. <coughs> we'll mix it both. And we have a little garlic. Seasoning. We should have full garlic. full cloves of garlic. Oh yeah, just I see. Slice yeah. It. Yes. Oh, there is some. Oh, okay. definitely, yeah. And then garlic. they do a nice dump, yeah. and, and the flavors suck into it. Mm -hmm. They do it good. They're, they wow. they know what they're doing. No. Later in the evening, Mike and John step into the Shed Cats Distillery for some local crawfish with a Latin flair. John. Where are we at and what are we doing? Hello, we're in South Lake Tahoe at the Shed Cat Distillery and Kitchen. And Chef Travis uh, and co-owner of the facility has uh, cooked us up some uh, crawdads from Lake Tahoe. You know what, I'm gonna take a picture. He put together these wonderful recipes that we're trying. Travis, tell us about what you're making. So it's a simple crawfish boil. I've got, but it's Latin inspired. A lot of things that we do here are Latin or a fusion of some sort. So with this crawfish boil, we have a lot of peppers. We use um, a little bit of Fresno. Um, we have a butter with a salsa matcha, which is a very, very traditional um, salsa from Jalisco. And then we also use Lima as our citrus in our boil, which is specific to Mexico. It has, a, they call it sweet lemon. Um, and it tastes a little bit like a grapefruit and wine kind of baby. Excellent. <laughs> and we just want to stay sustainable and use such beautiful local products like this. So John, yeah. is that, that looks like a premium Lake Tahoe crawfish. That's a jumbo. That's a jumbo. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow, man. You know what they really did? You know the one thing I really like about Travis and his restaurant is he has different dipping sauces, but also his his uh, boils had it just had a lot of flavor to it. Oh, there's a lot of flavor. Yeah, yeah, very good. And you all know how much I love crawfish and sustainable food and wild game and uh, the catch and then now the cook on the off the lake today. And it's actually been amazing. And uh, we've met a lot of friendly people in Lake Tahoe. And uh, 
I guarantee if, um, if you come here, you're gonna feel like family and they have some amazing food. So we are just finishing up here at Shed Cat's Distillery and Kitchen. And you wouldn't believe this, but literally they make their own whiskey, gin, and beer within the facility, as well as serving local crawfish in Lake Tahoe. This place is fantastic. Come and visit if you get a chance. What an epic crawfishing adventure. And big news, John received all of his commercial licensing that he needs to be a commercial crawfisherman. So he will be bringing these great crawfish to local restaurants and resorts in Lake Tahoe.